I'm going to do a quick run through of the main had in practical um, that uh, was written by the University of British Columbia um, and they, they provide a worksheet and it's probably something that most people who've ever done EcoPath have used um, uh, as part of the learning process. So it's a, it's a practical which is about um, two uh, species of fish which are exploited, one which is striped bass and the other one which is menhad. And striped bass are a predator, uh, menhad and feed on phytoplankton, so they're a fairly low trophic level species. Lots of details are given here about the, the progress of the fishery, how things have changed over time, so read through them. Make sure you set your model up in this way, so you have striped bass at the top, feeding 50-50 on other prey and menhaden, other prey feed on zooplankton, and then menhaden and zooplankton feed on phytoplankton. Um, you get all the details given here, Okay, so you have biomasses, productivity over biomass, consumption over biomass, and landings of the two fleets. You're told to set the runtime for 70 years, um, and to mimic the build-up of the Manhattan fishery. So we're going we're gonna to look at what happens when you increase the fishing effort applied by the Manhattan fleet. Okay, so I've got to Ecopath. I've set this model up already. With the basic input here, which are all the, the values that we were given. And the diet composition set up. So, the so number one is striped bass. They feed 50-50 in other prey and Manhattan, and then everything else mimics the um, table. Um, not bothered with pedigree. Uh, if I do a basic estimates, everything is blue, so all, um, everything's okay. You can see these are quite low ecotrophic efficiency levels. Highest there is for other prey. Um, we can have a quick look at the flow diagram. So we can see that we've got striped bass there feeding 50 50 on other prey and menhaden. And then we have uh, menhaden feeding on phytoplankton and zooplankton feeding on phytoplankton. And notice the lack of anything feeding on detritus. I think I'd normally want to have zooplankton feed a little bit on detritus, at least in this in this model. Now the, the aim of the game is to run this eco um, sim model, which is when we add the time dynamic to uh, our model. So we've got a nice balanced eco path model, and we want to see what happens when we run it over time. So we can uh, we want to set this to 70 years. Um, is there anything else we want to do here? There is at the moment. Uh, so we've set that. We'll run it once without changing fish, fishing out. So I'll just run EcoSim. So click on this button here. I don't know where that's come from. But never mind. Uh, and we'll just run it. And you can see that it stays level. Okay. So nothing changes. It runs for 70 years and every, everything is, is flat. Now we want to change the fishing effort. So we click on fishing effort. Um, we want to change the fishing effort only for Manhattan. So we'll click on Manhattan. First, we'll set it to a value. I'll set it to set it to five. Okay, so that sets it to five times the initial value. Um, and now I can just draw from left to right. I'll do a sort of general so increase. So it increases from zero at the very beginning up to the uh, top value here of five times uh, the sort of fishing effort that we set when we uh, set up the EcoPath model. Um, now we can run ecosim and we can see what happens. So if I run ecosim this time, click there, then click run. You can see that all sorts of things are going on. Um, so each of these lines represents one of the species or groups. So I click, and if I click on here, I can see what's happening here. So I can see the striped bass have initially increased and then decreased over time. Now, uh, when we look at the others, we see other prey have increased over time. Uh, decreased and increased, men had and have increased and decreased, zooplankton have decreased and increased, phytoplankton have um, generally increased, and so has detritus slightly increased over time. And now we can look at these uh, data, we can look to see what's happened in a variety of ways. One way is to look at these um, group plots. So for each species or group, functional group that you've put together, you can look at all of these different variables. So you've got biomass, how has that changed? But consumption over biomass, how has that responded? Uh, feeding time, and what's happened to the prey that these animals feed on? So striped bass feeds, remember striped bass feeds 50-50 on other prey and menhaden. And if, you, if we look at that figure there, we can see that other prey have increased as a component of the diet, while menhaden have decreased. Now menhaden have probably decreased because they have um, suffered an increase in fishing mortality and the biomass of Manhattan has decreased over time so they've not been as available 
to striped bass as they were at the beginning. Um, so there's lots of things to look at in here and, and to think about in terms of a story. Uh, this is quite an interesting one, this is mortality, you've got total mortality on the top, then you've got fishing mortality there which mimics this figure down here, and then we have predation down there as a, as a, a component of, of mortality. Um, we can also look at ecosim results. So if we look at this, then we get um, figures that tell us, you know, this was a catch at the start, this is a catch at the end of striped bass, and you can look at the ratio. And you can see that the ratio of catch for striped bass in the scenario that we've painted has changed. Uh, so uh, the ratio has gone uh, is 0.6. So the catch at the end of the catch, the catch is lower at the end than it is at the start. If we look at the catch for Menhaden, we can see the catch is higher than it is at the start. Okay, and that's uh, a function of effort as much as anything else. Um, so there are lots of things that you can um, play with here. Uh, but that's just giving you a quick run through uh, that practical.